my contract ended at work. Uh, which is great, actually, because I didn't really like the job. And now I have more time to work on the boat. Uh, I've got plenty of, I mean, okay. Uh, sure, I will actually work for resin, but I, I've actually got enough uh, saved up that I can go quite a few months before I find a new job. So I'm going to focus on the boat. I'm going to try to make YouTube videos every week. Uh, we'll see if I can do it. I'm Brian. Join the adventures as I share what I learned restoring a hurricane damaged catamaran with the dream to sail the world. Windows in my boat. If you remember this from before, this whole top was crushed down. This window here was completely shattered. Those windows were loose um, and the top was pushed down and now it's all back to normal. We're going to talk about that in this episode. It's a long process. So I'm going to take you back weeks, if not months before. We're going to go over how I had to get to the stage for this, although I probably could have done it a little bit easier, but uh, everything from fixing the 3D printer to fixing the router so that we could route that and trace the frame. So I'm going to walk you through the whole process. So I was thinking it's just something simple I need to get done. Uh, so I'll 3D print um, my new parts for my CNC and the 3D printer, turn it on, it goes up in smoke. So I took it apart. Looks like this is the problem there. This capacitor, I can see it's totally blown out. Let's get started. <laughs> How lucky is this? So here's the, cap here's the capacitor that blew out. Look at that, you can see it just totally blew up. Made tons of, of smoke when it did. Okay, so now here's another capacitor that I found in my drone stuff that happens to be the same size. It's a thousand something. It's ferrets. I don't know what it is. The UF micro ferrets, mini ferrets, pet ferrets. I don't know something. So as long as it matches, it's 35 volts. The same thing, even though it's a lot bigger, but it'll fit right there. Uh, the other thing you got to watch is that you keep the polarity correct. Uh, these do have a plus and a uh, minus on it. So this is the minus. Looks like it's marked. There's some law of nature that says if you put all the screws in, you put it back together, it's not going to work. And you'll have to take it apart again. So just put just as few screws as you can, test it out, and then it'll work the first time. And then you have to put all the screws back in. But if you put all the screws in first, it won't work the first time you try it. I don't know why. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing blows up again. Oh, no smoke. We might be okay. Okay, not to worry, this is still a boating channel, but I want to warn you about the next section. I'm gonna go and assemble my CNC router. And while I do that, I'm gonna basically just tell you what, let you inside of my mind so you know what's happening or what I'm thinking as I go about my work on this project. So today I'm building my router. Technically it's an upgrade because I, I had a smaller router and I'm actually rebuilding it into a larger router. Uh, and I'm upgrading it along the way. I used my original router to, uh, th that I hand cut all the pieces for my original router. And then the new router, <clears throat> I cut out the new router from the using the old router. So you can see like this is the base plate that was wood. Uh, I made it out of fiberglass because I had a piece of fiberglass that I had made uh, using resin infusion. So this is my first practice at resin infusion. So I figured out it was a good scrap piece to use for the base for this. You know, YouTube is such an interesting platform, uh, especially with the comments. You know, it, it's it's amazing. Like, it'd be interesting if people could comment on TV. Like, you know, I, I'm old enough that I remember the days before YouTube and TV was the thing, right? Or before Netflix. And if people could comment on TV shows, I wonder how the, the actors or the actresses would take it. Uh, anyways, it, it's, it's been quite a, quite a journey on my YouTube channel. I assemble these pieces and you know I've this would be the fourth time I assemble it although the first time was a couple of years ago or I mean the fourth end I've done because I did you know you do two per router you think I could figure out the best way to do it it 
Maybe I should listen to people who are always telling me, oh, clean up, because you need to find your stuff. All right, let's go over. It's easy to sit in a chair, even when I watch my videos and I watch me go back and do it. I'm like, why did I do it that way? There could have been so much better ways to do it. But, you know, you, you just, it's like hindsight. But instead of one person, uh, I got 20,000 people uh, standing over my shoulder telling me what to do. But I'm kind of getting used to it. That's probably the hardest part for me. One of the things that I like to study, or I like to learn a lot. I'm a big learner. And so I've been following a lot of psychology channels. So my, my two favorite things to learn are physics and engineering and psychology. Be right back, I gotta find some more hardware. Problem is, a JB welded this together because it broke. Because I was messing with the, having some issues with, with using the wrong size pipes in my last one. So this is um, stuck in there. Just a second. So range, think about what? <laughs> some of the psychology videos I've been learning, they've done some research and they've been able to classify all the personalities into five different main classes. Openness, conscientiousness, what's the E? Uh, extrovert or extroversion. And uh, agreeableness and narcissism. So if you understand what the different things are, then you can understand your personality and you can understand other people's personality and realize why you're good at certain things or why certain things bother you and other things don't bother you. One of the things that I found is I'm very high in openness, which is uh, a lot of times leads to creativity because you're able to accept things. However, openness is also uh, kind of leads to chaotic because you're okay with things being a little chaotic. Um, so creativity and, and chaotic. I also found that I'm very high in uh, conscientiousness. But conscientiousness is typically organization, and organization uh, is definitely not my strong suit. Although, actually, I like things to be organized. I just am not very, and I'm pretty good at organizing them. I just don't, don't prioritize it. But so it turns out there's another facet of conscientiousness, and that is industriousness. And that is why I'm conscientious, because... I'm very industrious. I like to build stuff. Uh, I like to get stuff done. So that's kind of where that comes into play. Now, as we, ah. so, but there's a conflict be between the conscientiousness of organization and the openness of chaotic. And so that's kind of what drives me crazy because I can handle the chaos, but I like to be organized. And so, kinda, it's conflicting there. So then the next one, extroversion. I am very low in extroversion. <laughs> I'm very much an introvert, which, uh, I don't know is the best thing to have a YouTube channel when you're an introvert. <laughs> uh, so I have learned uh, because uh, in my career as a computer programmer, it's very common to be an introvert. Uh, 
in most of the places where I, where I work, they think that I'm an extrovert because I've learned to be a little bit extroverted. And that's one of the things that I learned from these uh, lectures is you can kind of change, though you can't change your personality. You can kind of change uh, your range within that personality. And so even though I'm very much an introvert, I like to be alone in order to recharge. I, I'm a pretty social person too. At least I know how to socialize. Okay, so that's going to be just under 55. So there's some alignment that needs to happen with this once I get it onto the track. So I just need to get it roughed in for now. So one of the other attributes after extroversion is um, agreeableness. That's one of my other problems. I'm kind of an agreeable person. I hate conflict. But being not agreeable is actually a good trait in business. Thanks for good salespeople. Extrovert that's not agreeable is a good salesperson. There we go. That is roughly assembled. This guy here, now it's upside down. This guy here will go up. This guy here will slide back and forth. I got these tracks. These are what the CNC is going to run on. I got these tracks lined up with the laser right here and right here. Quite a tedious job, but I have these adjustments that I put on there. So if you're curious how the CNC works, I'll give you the one minute uh, overview of how uh, a CNC works, or at least this one. Um, so what we've got is we've got these stepper motors, and a stepper motor is controlled because it can computer control one uh, like partial degrees and just move according to what it's told. And so that's on this belt, and this belt goes down to the stops that I made, uh, down to the far end, and that pulls it along the track. And there's two motors that are synced up exactly the same on the other side. Uh, to, to make it move in this axis. Then for this axis, other vertical axis, we have this screw here. And so as this rotates, it moves it up and down. And so that's the same thing. This moves it up and there's another one on the other side that's exactly the same. And so that controls the vertical movement. And then um, those two motors are also synced up. This motor here, there's a single motor uh, uh, on this axis that basically slides it back and forth. These are using uh, roller skate bearings, uh, and these are just 3D printed parts. If you go to the V1 engineering site, they have a form and everything, and the plans are free to, to do this. Um, I bought my kit there, and so the kit came with the electronics that are in this and the electronics that are in this. So if you see this, this is the actual motor controller. And it's pretty much the same. They actually reused they actually reuse like on this, if, when I started up, it's the same unit as controls a 3D printer. Uh, and so they, they have this, and you can actually convert this into a 3D printer theoretically. If you put a hot uh, head here and fed the um, filament in, it'd be giant. Uh, you can also put a laser on this instead. So it's just a motion controller and controls in the three axes. So uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, design, very simple. Uh, very simple and uh, for the cost, right? I don't think I would run a production shop on this thing. Uh, but for, for the cutting I've got to do, uh, it's worth it. I mean, it's kind of fun. Okay, it's not really worth it. Like, for the bulkheads, I could ascribe them out, uh, describe the templates out on the wood, and then um, just cut them by hand, probably for about the same amount of time that it took me to uh, upgrade my router to this size, and then um, assemble it and do all the printing. But... It'll allow me to do some cool stuff like puzzle joints and things like that. Uh, but some of the interior furniture, it might help because it might go a little faster. Uh, but I wanted to do it anyway, so uh, that's why I did it. And I can do whatever I want because I can. So first I do a test uh, with a pen in there instead of the router just to make sure that it's drawing okay. Uh, once that tests out okay, uh, I'll try my first cut. And here I'm cutting the logo out. Well, 
first cut. Eh, not too bad. Depending on what I want, then I'll fill it with epoxy and sand the top down and it'll be kind of cool looking. So maybe I'll do something like this. This is just a test cut on a scrap board. I had to fabricate this window because it was broken. The first thing I did is I used some of this fiberglass that I'd made up. It's just a thin, flexible fiberglass material. It works really well. I made it on a flat table. Uh, and templated this window here. You see that? So I, I templated the window. It sits down like that. Once I had that templated, uh, I did something that I learned. If, if you, any of you guys are pilots and you watch uh, Mike Patey's uh, YouTube channel, he's really popular. Uh, now, and that's a real engineer. You know, I always, I'm kind of a wannabe. I, I try to do engineering, I try to test stuff, but man, that's a real engineer. Does uh, FEA analysis, uh, and then he breaks stuff. Uh, th that's kind of my hero of what I would like to be. So anyway, um, what he did is to digitize it, he uses graph paper. So I took this graph paper, it's kind of a mess now, but I laid it out on the floor, taped it together, because I wish I had a big piece, but I didn't, and then I took coordinates. And then I took those coordinates and I laid this template on top of it to get the coordinates of all the curves. And then I entered those coordinates into CAD. So then I was able to reproduce that, the, uh, the same shape of that window and get the proper curves and get it nice. Now, if I had that window out, I could have just uh, used like a flush cut router or something to do it, or I could have even made something from this, but I wanted to use the CNC. So then once I had uh, that, I tested it with a pen. And so I put a pen in the CNC and I traced on the board, made sure I got it right, made sure it matched the, uh, the template. Once that was done, all I had to do was cut the acrylic. Uh, so I went and found cast acrylic. I originally got the wrong color, but then I had to get a full sheet. So I'm sure I'll be able to use it for something else. And that was also good because I, in, in case I screwed it up. What a difference to have this window in. Starting to rain. Uh, well, it's not really in. Uh, I still got to bend it, but this window has very little bend on it. Pretty much everything is flat, except for this little corner there. I just have this part here to bend down. Let's give it a try. I did some practice bending, uh, so it should be good. So my friend Jeff, who's fixing his boat up, uh, just one boat down from me, came and helped me. And we used two heat guns, one on the inside and one on the outside. And I used a digital thermometer to check the temperature to make sure we got it up to the proper temperature. That pretty perfect. No more gap down here. So now I just got to get all this out. Get this window out, which isn't even, which is still attached, sort of. Um, get this window out so then I can... Um, clean all this up they're not glued in but they're just sitting there but they're bent in shape cleaned up tomorrow I'll glue them on as a computer guy when I say I'm installing windows it usually means something else but this has been a lot of work to get to this stage and I'm getting close <laughs> so uh, I've got these prepared I I glued or actually I just used some double-sided tape mounting tape mounted some uh, holders so that they'll sit in the right position. I sanded this all, uh, then I marked it in the right position so I know where to paint the, um, the primer stuff, and then um, sanded them all, wiped it down with alcohol. And one of the things with the alcohol is it, the, according to the instructions, it will prevent the, the other stuff from activating. So you gotta let the alcohol completely uh, flash off. So that's what I'm doing now. One final check of the instructions, and I'm ready to get started. I start with the primer. It's kind of like purple primer if you've ever used uh, PVC pipe. That stuff is nasty. In fact, it ate through one of my gloves and turned one of my fingers black. <laughs> Next, you wait about 30 minutes, and then you have a two-hour window to get the caulk on. And what you want to do when you put the caulk on, um, according to my friend Keith, is uh, make a pyramid shape. And you want that to be a kind of a tall narrow and that that helps so when you push the window down you don't get any air bubbles in there so after i put a, a good bead of caulk in there i go through and i shape it into the pyramid shape and then i push the windows in to, to um to get them to secure now you don't have to push very hard um, because you just want to push it up against the spacers you, you want to keep that space 
One of the things mistakes I did make is I didn't clean up well enough. And so it's a lot more work if you wait the next day and have to come in there and, and, and clean up the windows. But I was able to get them to clean up and they look nice. The interesting part about the installation that really surprised me was how expensive it was. Uh, it was more expensive than my, my piece of plexiglass for my window. Uh, I think I had about $450, almost 500 bucks worth of stuff just for the installation of the windows. It took me uh, 20 tubes of caulk to caulk this guy. And you want it to be thick. Uh, the reason that you don't want it thin is because this has to expand and contract. And if it's thin, uh, it will shear. And so um, they said a minimum of 3 16 uh, but a quarter is better. So I got a quarter uh, all the way around. So I put spacers, I found some, um, stick on foam is what i actually ended up using first off i want to apologize to the to my future self or to the future owner of this boat probably my future self uh, who has to remove these windows uh, i put them on really good <laughs> 20 20 cans of caulk uh, went into these windows this is the stuff that i use to seal the windows seca flex 295 uv i don't know that it's the best stuff uh, there's some better Dow stuff, uh, I think $7.95 or something from Dow, uh, that is like the gold standard for glazing uh, buildings and stuff. It's super strong, but it's more focused for glass, not acrylic. And um, so I used what the factory used just so I wouldn't have any worries. It'd be just like factory, I guess, uh, or at least what the uh, original factory used when they built this. Because like I said, I had the, the full installation instructions. So this is the primer that I used, uh, primer 209D. Uh, that's I had the instructions from the manufacturer on how to install windows. This stuff is nasty and is expensive. It was like this little can. I think it was like 80 bucks or something. It was outrageous. Um, this guy, this tool was the most useful thing. It's an air caulk gun going through 20 tubes of caulk. It just made it flow out nice and fast and it required hardly any air. So I used my little air compressor to do that. Overall, I think it's uh, I know for, for a fact because these windows here uh, were installed I guess I know the previous owner installed them because I heard that from the person from the salvage company they were talking about they installed or they had these installed um, and so they, they weren't the factory and I I know because I took the old ones off I know how well they were done I, I can guarantee that I did a better job installing these windows than uh, they did installing them so I feel very confident that they're going to stay in place and they're going to be super strong I hope you enjoyed this episode if you did please give me a like and a comment, because not only do I enjoy the comments, but they also help YouTube promote this video so that it gets seen more often. Uh, now that I'm unemployed, hopefully YouTube will provide a little bit of assistance so that I can wait a little bit longer before I have to get a job again. We'll see how that goes. Uh, till then, I'm going to try to make videos more often. I'm making lots of progress on the boat this week that I'm super excited to show you. So until next time, thank you to all of you. Thank you to all my patrons, and I'll see you later.